Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about interactive components. What are interactive components to begin with? Well, interactive components are basically components that are linked together via variants. So for example, you have a singular button component that has different states like the uh, default state, the hover state, and the active state. So I can have multiple triggers in that particular component point to different variants. So by default, a button can appear in the default state. I can hover over it and a different variant is gonna replace the default state. And then once I click the hover state, the hover state is gonna re be replaced by the active state. And that's basically what uh, interactive components are. We're gonna go ahead and actually create an example of that just so we can experiment with it. And we're gonna create a save button. Basically, the save button is gonna have the save text by default. Once I hover over it, the background should change. Once I click on it, the save text should change to saving. A loading spinner should also appear on that. And then after a few seconds, it should change to saved or something along those lines. So let's just go ahead and actually create that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create a white, um, I'm basically gonna go ahead and create a button. I'm gonna say this is gonna be purple 600. Uh, let's just give it a border radius, give it some uh, nice padding, have it really have it have a wide button. And this basically is our button component. I'm gonna say this is gonna be our button default. So this is gonna be the default state. And I can actually just include it at the top. So, and then after I've done that, I can click on the plus button to actually create a new variant. So this is gonna be the default state. This is gonna be the hover state. In the hover state, the button can be slightly darker as I've mentioned before. And then in the other state, so one thing that I'm actually just gonna do, I'm gonna create an auto layout for this component. This thing, the, the auto layout that I've just applied is applied to the component container. It has no effect on the actual components. What it basically does is it allows me to position the variants in one particular manner. I just want them sideways instead of like up and down or uh, arranged vertically, which is why I've applied that. So now I can basically duplicate this. I can say, or duplicate the hover state and I can say this is gonna be the saving state. And in the saving state, the text is just gonna be different. And then we're gonna return back to a saved state. I'm gonna create a saved state and I'm gonna say this is gonna be saved. So basically this is how we create variants or a component with multiple variants. And in order for interactive components to work, I basically have to go to the prototype tab, which you can go with uh, the shift E key. So now that you're here, you can basically just drag this uh, arrow to the variant that you want it linked to. So I can say, that this default state, while I'm hovering over it, it should change to the hover state, which, which sounds fine. And on the hover state, once I click on the hover state, it should change to the saving state. That also makes sense. And after a particular delay, so I'm gonna change that to a delay. After, let's say, a delay of 2000, uh, two seconds, which is 200 milliseconds, I want this to automatically change to the saved state. And this is basically, really quickly just how you go about creating components or interactive components and i'm going to center this button uh, horizontally let's just go ahead and actually open it and now if i'm hovering over it as you can see the background is changing once i click on it the save has been changed to saving and then after two seconds the saving is now changed has now changed to save one other thing i can do is i can actually create a spinner and in order for me to create a spinner i first i'm going to first create a circle i'm basically going to center this particular uh, um, just center align the content in this particular auto layout i am going to give this a radius of 68 let's just uh, change the border radius around it to maybe 24 or whatever it is i'm i basically just wanted circle and let's just make it slightly thinner and basically position it half ways and basically let's just see how this looks. So this is basically, it's gonna start from here. So one thing that I can do is I can basically just move it at the start and slightly more. Maybe let's just make it again 25%. So I think this is 25%. I can also say, 
I can also say this is going to start from zero. It's if it starts from let's say zero now as you can see it's minus 25 percent so it's basically 25 percent size and you can experiment with the size in whatever way you want i'm going to change this color to white and here we basically have our spinner which i think looks good now we just have to rotate it so in order for me to rotate it i obviously have to create another interactive component so i'm basically going to say this is going to be our i'm actually first of all going to go ahead and create a frame around it i'm going to say this is going to be our spinner zero percent so this is going to be the start I'm going to create a component um, and then going to click the plus sign so by default as you can see the the variants actually are created vertically but i i'm going to make convert this container to an auto layout and basically just position it horizontally because i want these side by side i'm going to say this particular state is going to be uh, the first one was 25 percent this is going to be the first one was zero percent this is going to be 25 i'm going to choose the inner child and i'm basically going to rotate it now i'm going to duplicate this i'm going to say this is going to be our 50 percent state and in this state basically the inner child is going to be positioned like this i'm going to rotate it again and i'm going to say this is going to be our 75 percent state and in this state basically it's going to be sorry i'm actually just moving the whole container it's actually going to be let's say at this particular point and here we have our spinner created now in order for me to link it to the interactive component i can go ahead and i can say after a delay of let's say zero milliseconds um, figma does not allow us to actually use zero milliseconds so it just converts it to one millisecond but then the difference is hardly noticeable so i don't want you to worry about it it should be the animation so it should be linear and it should happen really quickly so again uh, zero milliseconds uh, and i'm going to basically do the same thing here so basically after a delay of zero and then similarly here that after a delay of zero and then at the end i want to see after a delay of zero it should return to its original position and now let's just see how that looks so i'm basically going to go ahead and copy the spinner i'm going to go to our original spinner that we created here and i'm going to basically replace it with the spinner that we've created and now let's see how it looks so i click on save and as you can see the spinner is moving really fast so obviously we don't want that so in order for us to make it slow we can obviously reduce this or increase this linear animation we can say that it's going to be let's say 100 or maybe even 300 maybe 300 is fine this also actually let's just go ahead and actually select all of them and say this also all of them are actually going to be 300 so i'm going to save and as you can see we have the spinner and after two seconds the spinner disappears and the button is changed uh, the button text is now changed to save in order for us to actually reset this saved thing so after i click on saved uh, it should all it should go back to the save position and basically i think that's done so if i click on saved it converts back to save i'm hovering over it that looks fine i click on it again we have the spinner and then it reverts to its original position and this is basically how you go about creating interactive components they're really simple there's nothing complicated here it's really basic you just have to figure out the different interactions that you need there are different triggers here so you can have on click on drag while hovering while pressed so on and so forth I can actually create one other slight component so you can see one other minor interaction so imagine you had a toggle so i'm going to create a toggle using the rectangle uh, key here or the, the rectangle element here so here we have a toggle i'm going to say this is actually going to be really light and we can make it maybe gray uh, 200 so by default this is going to be a gray 200 maybe 12 pixels or something and then we're going to have a circle on the left so here we have the circle i'm basically gonna go ahead and create a frame around it gonna position this element here so this is going to be our toggle slash default so this is going to be the default state for the toggle i'm going to create another state and you can obviously again do that using the plus key here um, so here we have the toggle state i'm going to say this is going to be the active state and in the active state it's basically going to move to the further right which obviously makes sense that's how toggles are and i'm also going to change the color so instead of let's say it being gray here i'm going to say this is going to be blue here and this background is also going to be blue 
200 or maybe 100 or maybe 200 makes sense it doesn't really matter so basically what we can do now is we can see that <clears throat> if I click on this it should change to this and if I click on and if I click on this it should change back to this so now let's just go ahead and actually drag this here as well and experiment with it so if I'm clicking here it moves to the right if I click on it again it moves to the left I can also change this click trigger to a drag trigger if I wanted to I can say on drag it should change to that and similarly here on drag it should change to that so now if I click if I'm clicking on it nothing happens but if I drag it uh, the animation happens and similarly if I'm dragging it it's working but if I and that's basically it I can I, I, I don't think I need to explain it more I'm sure you guys understand and that's basically you go, how you go about creating interactive components that's going to be it for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. Let me know if there's anything else you would like me to cover in interactive components or any other, any other topic. But I'll see you in the next video. Take care.